Have you ever wondered how many whales there are? How big do they get? How do they eat? Whales are some of the coolest animals in the whole world. So let's go learn more about them. And I'm Jessica. And we're naturalists. So what is a naturalist, you ask? Well, a naturalist is a student in natural history or an expert in the field. We are both experts in whales. So today, we're going to learn a little bit about whales, dolphins, and porpoise. So first of all, take a look at this chart of all of the whales, dolphins, and porpoise in the whole world. As you can see, there's a ton of diversity in this group of animals, and there's over 80 different species of whales, dolphins, and porpoise. Now this whole group of animals is put into a scientific category called cetaceans. So from now on, if you hear the word cetaceans, it's a scientific word that means whales, dolphins, and porpoise. What I want you to take a look at is see if you can find the scuba diver. It's kind of hidden. Take a minute, try to see if you can find it. And that scuba diver is going to give you a fantastic perspective of how big some of these whales and dolphins actually are compared to an adult human. Do you have a favorite whale? Let us know in the comments below. The blue whale is the largest animal that's ever lived larger than any dinosaur, larger than any megalodon, and can stretch to be three school buses end to end. That can be over a hundred feet long. Since there are so many different whales, they're actually broken up into two different groups. One is called the toothed whale category. The other group of whales is called the baleen whales. And so we'll talk a little bit more about what that means to be a baleen whale. This gray whale has its mouth slightly open, so you can see some yellow stuff hanging down from the top of the whale's mouth. Now this yellow stuff is called the whale's baleen. Baleen is made up of the same thing as your hair and your fingernails. So if it breaks, it keeps growing. If you look at the inside of a baleen whale's mouth, it looks super hairy, just like our hair. Baleen can sometimes be as long as 12 feet in the mouths of some of these really big whales. And they use the baleen teeth to actually filter the water like a giant spaghetti strainer, pushing the water back out of their mouth once they've had a mouthful of water and food. So baleen whales do not eat plants or algae. They are carnivores, which means they eat other living animals. Baleen whales love to eat tiny things like plankton, krill, and shrimp. Here in the start, we have little tiny krill. And as you can see, they're very small compared to their larger fish that they would eat. And they're pink in color. They also like to feed on small schooling fish. So things like sardines and anchovies, the types of fish that form the huge groups below the surface. Now the main goal for a baleen whale is to try to get as much food into one gulp as possible. Now this is a fin whale feeding right next to our small 25 foot passenger boat. It is holding six people on board and they are excited to see this whale feed. What this whale is doing is it found a big school of fish just beneath the surface of the water. Now, when these whales find that food, they open their mouths extremely wide and swim forward through the school of fish. Now, starting from the tip of their nose down to about their belly button area, they have expandable throat grooves. So their throats can expand out like a big balloon and they can take in thousands and thousands of gallons of water at a time. So once the whale takes a huge gulp around a school of fish, and their throats expand out, they don't actually swallow all of that seawater. Instead, what they do is when they close their mouths, they use their giant tongues to spit the water back out through the baleen. So again, the baleen acts like a strainer or a filter. They push all the water out of their mouths and just swallow their food whole. All right, so now that we learned a little bit about baleen whales, Let's talk about the other group of cetaceans called toothed whales. Toothed whales 
are pretty cool. As you can see here, this is a common dolphin. Common dolphin have tons of small, sharp teeth in their mouth that they use to catch and spear small schooling fish. So what do toothed whales eat? There's a variety of toothed whales around the world, so they also eat a variety of different types of food. Some toothed whales feed on different species of fish. Other toothed whales, like the sperm whale, this is a sperm whale tooth, feed on giant squid. While other toothed whales, like orca or killer whales, feed on marine mammals. So that means they eat things like seals, sea lions, and sometimes even other whales. Toothed whales use their teeth to grab onto their food, but they don't use their teeth to chew. Instead, they just grab on and swallow their food whole. So something else super cool about toothed whales is that they have the ability to use echolocation. Echolocation is a big word, but it means they're able to paint a picture of their surroundings using sound. These dolphins are clicking, buzzing, whistling through an organ in their forehead. The forehead on the toothed whale is called a melon. They create sounds and send them out into the surrounding waters. Now when that sound bounces off of something solid, such as a fish swimming by, the echo bounces back to the dolphin and they can tell how far away their food is, what direction they're swimming, and they can get a whole lot of information using their echolocation. This video you can hear all the buzzes, the squeals, the squeaks, clicks and whistles that these animals are making. Toothed whales are the only type of whale that are able to use echolocation. Now another question we often get asked about whales on our whale watching boats is how do whales breathe? Well, whales are mammals. So just like us, they're going to have nostrils and they're going to breathe air from the surface. So if you take a look at this image, you can see that whales have holes right on the top of their head that look very similar to our own noses. We call those holes blow holes. Blow holes are used for breathing. And in the baleen whales, you'll see they actually have two blow holes, two nostrils on the top of the head that they use for breathing air from the surface. The toothed whales, however, only have one blow hole. The one hole at the top of their head is actually just for breathing. It goes straight to the surface, opens and closes to breathe oxygen straight to their lungs. That second nostril sits right there in the melon, the fatty forehead we talked about. And it actually acts like a pair of lips. Those lips, called the phonic lips, actually squeeze together like you're exhaling air from a balloon, making the squeaks, buzzes, whistles, and their echolocation noises. Those are all produced from their melon, and that is what that second nostril is used for. We often get asked, well, why am I seeing the whale score water out of its nose? That's a great question that's simple to explain. Imagine if you are doing the backstroke in a pool, your face is wet from swimming, and you have to sneeze. Well, water's gonna shoot out from your face and off of your face because you had a wet face. It's not water coming from your lungs. That's similar to what we're seeing when these whales surface. They have been holding their nose shut, so when they come to the surface to exhale all the air out of their lungs, which is as fast as you and I sneeze, about 100 miles an hour, that shoots water off of their back and up into the sky in what we call a spout that shoots into the air. And all that mist is coming from water off of their backs. Remember, whales are mammals and they breathe air because they have lungs just like us. Now the whale spout is really handy for us who work on whale watching boats. When we go out on the water, we don't need to use any special equipment to find these whales. We don't need to use sonar or echolocation to find them. We don't use tags. We don't train the whales or feed them. We simply have to look for their spouts. If you see a whale spout, it means a whale is breathing. So we only use our eyes and our binoculars. Have you ever been whale watching? Let us know in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed learning about whales and dolphins today, and we really hope to see you on the water soon.
loved what you saw, don't forget to let us know. Like, subscribe, or comment here on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to check us out on social media at Newport Wales for all of the latest whale watching content.